another video. In this video, I, Doc Ian, will explain how I do the technique known as pre-shading and what I use it for. Uh, to begin with the second part, what do I use it for? Well, it's, it's a technique for speed painting. Uh, what pre-shading means is putting down a gradient, a neutral gradient from dark to light on a miniature and then painting glazes of color over that. And the point is that the color you use to glaze, you only need to put one coat, one glaze. You don't need to shade or highlight that because you already have that gradient from dark to light beneath it. And by the way, by glaze, I mean a transparent coat of paint or a mostly transparent coat of paint. And this is a way to get things done quicker. And I like to use it for these minis. These are a bunch of Reaper Bones minis, which is a material that I like to not spend a lot of time on. So I like to use these speed painting techniques. Now, as I also said, this is going to be how I do it. I perhaps do it in a slightly different way from most other people. If you want to know how other people do it, there are plenty of videos on YouTube you can search for. I don't need to tell you that. So, how the first step, well, of course, after prepping a miniature, after, say, cleaning it up, putting on a base, and eventually uh, possibly gluing on some flock, th there is no flocking on these bases, these are all uh, sort of flagstone texture bases, I prime. And I'm going to show you examples of two different ways of priming, two different gradients. There is the the beige and the gray. Now, this is simply a light gray primer. I, I think it's Vallejo, doesn't really matter. This is a more of a sandy color primer. It's a skeleton bone from Army Painter. And I'm going to talk a bit about, well, or show you uh, how using a beige brown gradient as opposed to a black to white gradient affects the final look of the miniature. So, priming is the first stage. Second stage is shading. Uh, I do this by washing. So, let me take care of that and I'll be right back. And here we have our little miniatures after shade washes have been applied. For uh, the ones primed in gray, I washed them in black, or rather a dark gray. And for the ones in the bone color, I applied a sepia wash, which as you can see is not quite as stark. Still, it is kind of dark and we need to highlight and to get a good gradient. So, I'm, and I'm going to highlight through simply dry brushing. Yeah. And, well, let me take care of that, and uh, we'll be back shortly. And so our Motley crew has had some dry brushing applied. Uh, just straight, plain old white on the gray ones. I actually went a, an extra step that I tested just now, experimenting in a tutorial video. Hmm, how weird. Anyway, for, for these, I first did a sort of an all-over dry brush of of an off-white color and then a very light dry brush of just plain pure white at the very tops where the most light would be hitting. I uh, don't know if you can tell that he's slightly lighter towards the top here than down here. Oh well. Um, the next stage is to then apply various glazes. And now I'm, I'm not going to show you the, the painting process because you've seen people paint stuff before. What I'm going to do is I'm going to, going to take various examples of paint and paint-like products and apply them to various areas and then show you what it looks like and the difference. Specifically if I put the same glaze on a portion of a gray mini versus a portion of a one of the beige minis, and what, what's, what's the difference in the final outcome? That's what we're trying to find out. So, be back with some examples. Right, so this is what they look like after I've colored in the skin on them with various shades and the like. Uh, 
To begin with, if, if I simply apply some Reichlin Flesh Aid um, in a couple of coats actually, this is what it looks like on a um, the tan pre-shaded model and this is what it looks like on the one that's been pre-shaded gray. So starker contrast here of course. Um, and here's another one, right, same sort of thing. Uh, heading over to the inks, the Skin Wash ink, as I've mentioned in other um, contexts, an ink is much more heavily pigmented. And you can tell because this is what you get if you apply just pure ink, nothing else, uh, no dilution which compared with this guy is pretty stark, right? But then I tried uh, ink with equal amounts of water, so 50% dilution, and then we get this sort of tan look, which is kind of in between the other two, right? Now, for these females, I wanted something more subtle, so what I prepared was actually a, a glaze of a paint. This is rosy flesh, and this one is perhaps difficult to see. This one might be a little easier. This created a kind of pink look to it, still maintaining some of the shadows. Um, oh, and the samurai was done with I don't remember what he was done with. Sorry, <laughs> forgot. Anyway, we have this final female half work where I used both the rosy flesh and an extra wash of Athonian camo shade to get that greenish hint that, that a half work might have, which is what she is. Well, let's apply some... Um, various paints and shades and whatnot to larger areas of clothing and uh, armor and the like and see what that looks like. And so we have some more examples of how different types of shading appear. We can start with the reds. Uh, the red on this girl here is Blood Letter Glaze from Citadel, while this red is a red ink from Vallejo. Again, you can see that the, the ink is stronger. Uh, if we continue here, her hair is done uh, with a Citadel wash, the uh, Cassandora yellow, while this yellow hair is brighter because it's done with the Lamenter's yellow, the, uh, the Citadel glaze. Again, and he, his clothing here is green ink as compared to the Wave Watcher green glaze on this cloak. Um, we have uh, some examples of browns, I think. Let me see here. Yes. What was this? Oh, right. So. Um, This boot is a brown, is a sepia ink, I believe, actually. Uh, this is some sort of wash on the, the gloves and the boots. I forgot which one. These boots and gloves are done with a watered down paint. Again, I kind of prefer the look of the ink. It just, it, it's more vibrant provides, it pops more. Oh, and you might have noticed that I've actually painted in the eyes of all these guys rather quickly, but nonetheless, it's a cheap trick. It, it's, a, it's, a, it's a fast and easy way to make it look as if you put more effort into the miniatures that you have. At least if you have the brush control and the steady hand to, to paint eyes quickly uh, and not worry too much about getting them exact. Anyway, 
now you've seen some different alternatives, let's finish up a few of these and see what they look like completed. And here's a crew of fully painted uh, pre-shaded minis. I'm taking this shot at a distance so you get some sort of idea of what they would look like on a tabletop because that is the proper setting for, for miniatures painted with a, a really speed painting technique like this. You don't want to look at them too closely um, because if you do, um, I'm gonna have to... Okay, so if you look at them this closely they kind of look like crap, don't they? At least very, very rough. And uh, as I mentioned, that's sort of the price you pay. You, 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 you can choose between quality or speed. You can't have both, really. Um, something I should also point out that this is kind of an experiment for me doing these. I, I normally reserve this technique for models that are monsters or beasts that have like fur or scales or something with that sort of texture it actually gets much nicer results on miniatures like that I, I might show you that some other time um, in fact my normal speed thing, painting technique for character minis like this is slightly different but I will show you that in my next technique video coming up in about a week I hope um, but I hope you still had some uh, use for, for um, this little test of mine and you got some information out of it. So, well, please let me know what you think, comment and so forth. And I will see you in my next video. Takiyo, signing off.